as we cover many an insane movie and numerous cult TV phenomena. Are you ready to get jacked up? Are you with us? Then listen on. show we got author lindsay g here how are you <laughs> hello how are you always good <laughs> are we doing funny voices can if you want cool there's a lot of I voices probably, that come out of somewhere and i probably won't stick with it like, we have a lot you... of ghosts on this show that are fourth or fifth or sixth people respectively so yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay maybe we can we can fill in for them with funny voices I could try to do an accent, but I usually find that my accents just disappear after a little while, or they get very weird, so we'll see. Perfect. <laughs> and, oh, well, oh, I think John's here. I don't know. Is oh, yes, I'm here, of course. Mm, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, perfect. So, Hello, John. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Alrighty, so essentially we are just breaking down just songs of the 90s that just stood out to us. All right, well. And uh, the the first timer always goes first, so uh, Lindsay. Uh, <laughs> what, okay. what part of the 90s just really just made you say, you know, that song just perfectly captures everything about <laughs> innovation of that period? Um. Well... That is a good question. I I grew up in the 90s, so, like, the, the early 90s for me, I was still very much a kid, and by the end of the 90s, I was almost out of high school. So I went through so many phases and feelings during that time that uh, it's hard to just say, like, yes, this song is the 90s for me. <laughs> um, but it sounds like 90s, but is it really 90s? Right, right. Exactly. I mean, like, I start, I'm pretty sure I started the 90s listening to Ace of Bass because they were on the radio all the time. Oh, thank and that you. Was, I was totally going to bring up one. <laughs> uh, yes, The Sign, right? That's the one. That yes. song was huge. And I remember <laughs> listening to Casey Kasem count down like the top 100 songs of the year or whatever in. I don't even know what year it was, but I was very young. And when they said that the sign was number one, I remember jumping up and down on my bed <laughs> and like singing <laughs> along at the top of my lungs. Um, and by the time the 90s were over, I was listening to Marilyn Manson. So there's mm -hmm. a really mm -hmm. widespread going on there. Um, but oh, I'm going to say that for me, probably the song that really encapsulates the 90s is you ought to know by alanis morissette okay uh, yeah that was on my Very list good. too nice <laughs> good yeah, pick good pick yeah yeah that song i mean it rocked my world when i was like i don't know i guess i was like 12 or 13 when it came out and i was suddenly like oh my god like you can sing about this stuff. You can talk about this stuff. And like, I didn't know anything about any of it, but it felt so personal. A and lot of her so, songs definitely feel personal. I mean, especially when she's saying, when, I, when you have your baby. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I remember like, sounds I like she my... met every kind of douchebag on the planet had to just say, hey, man, you're, you're just, yeah. you're just full of wrong sauce. You need to go. <laughs> yeah. And like, she was so young, but she had clearly, like, lived through so much more than I had, and I was just, like, 
amazed at her. Like, she was so mad. And it was, like, so yeah. cool that she was so mad. Because um, I was mad because I was 13, you know? <laughs> oh, I was definitely 13. I was like, everyone's playing around. I'm like, I want to get out of this prison that they call school. <laughs> yeah. Why can't I be grown up yet? Um, right. Everyone else is not serious. I am. And I'm just getting bored right now. So I think as, as a good point is, like, they basically, I mean, Anyone who's seen the music box special on HBO, the Woodstock 99. Oh, my God. <laughs> she performs oh, yeah. there live, and she seems to be, like, the, one of the few highlights because they were interviewing other people like Moby, and he's like, yeah, why were we here? This didn't <laughs> go at all, especially when this crowd was very homophobic, racist, bigoted, and just channeling the angst in the wrong way. <laughs> and it's yeah, like, what a all the songs are going to have it. Totally. Yeah. You know, all the songs are going to have angst, but, yeah, it's like... She seemed like she was just very relaxed and everything. And that says a lot because everyone was literally sleeping there and doing whatever there. And it's like, yeah, that's that was yeah. a very toxic concert. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the thing like, OK, so <laughs> um, I am a very loud feminist. So just just you should know anybody who's listening. That's what I'm bringing to the conversation. <laughs> um, but I really felt like. Alanis Morissette, like, that whole album was just her being, like, stop telling me what to do, stop telling me what to believe, stop, like, you know, stop assuming that because I'm a young woman, you can push me around. And that right. was really, really powerful. And the fact that songs like that got so popular and got so much radio play was really huge. I mean, women had been making songs about being pissed off about everything for a long time but you really didn't hear them that much and yeah so, i think the record executives were definitely listening and they were trying to censor it as much as they could and then once oh, the yeah. songs go platinum was like yeah well our our well, reserve she's making can't... us a mint right now so i guess we'll play the song <laughs> right we, yeah. we we're gonna let our censors go because uh, we, we realize they're talking about us and now it's just going to expose how shitty we are. <laughs> so right. Story. But yeah, yeah. And it, it, she does a lot of good songs and definitely good to have someone who's progressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she it was really interesting too to like see the um, the music that she came out with afterward and the, the changes that she went through. You know, she's like a those albums that she's released after Jagged Little Pill have all been much more mellow. <laughs> but she was pissed off. She was a Disney kid. I think she was on. Oh, really? I yeah. think she was on Disney early in. Maybe that's in where it came life. from. Stop telling me what to do, Disney and parents. <laughs> well, the the rumor is, and I think that this has been confirmed, but at the time it was still a rumor. <laughs> she was dating, um, what's his name, Uncle Joey, from Full House. Yeah. <sighs> Okay. When she was like really? 17, 18, 19. Ooh. Mm. And he ditched her. And she wrote You Ought to Know about Uncle Joey. <laughs> Dave, I can't remember his last name. Uh, uh, Dave Collier. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I'm not cool with that because he's like right? 30 something. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was about that cool. age. <laughs> he was clearly not in the right for dating her in the first place. And, you know, I'm sure that he thought he had all the power in that relationship. And then he dumped her and, he, and she released that yeah, song. There's a lot of Hollywood elites <laughs> who would do that. And half the time they were doing it just to be fun or just being friends who were hanging out. But it's like, uh, guys, that's not a good role model. <laughs> yeah. No. Yep. And yep. Uh, you look at it, almost every other comedian or celebrity has done it. So it's, it's like, yeah, I'm not going to offend you guys. You knew what was going up. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, most of them, you know, get away with it, but uh, he sure got called out. <laughs> yeah, and she made money off of it, and <laughs> what's he yeah. up to besides sitcom rerun <laughs> residuals? Yeah, none of them. <laughs> yeah, as far as I, I know. Say. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think, like you say, she perfectly sums up how, again, is like, you got to stand on your own two feet, and you got to just tell people, hey, you know, stop. You know, getting in my way, acting like I'm a child. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I think she knew how to make it into a very positive message, even though what the subject matter is just like, yeah, I mean, growing up young sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very much so. So, 
Yeah, I think um, I actually had that as number two on my list, but the more I'm thinking about it, the more like that was the song of the 90s for me. Absolutely. Um, I think more or less, um, uh, I think a lot of the songs are, do a good mixture of pop and rock together, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I think it, it's interesting how you bring up, you know, feminism, because it's like, you'll see so many people is like now with me too. And the SJW wars is like, they're acting like they weren't ever feminists. I'm like, if you believe in equality, then you are a feminist. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but acting like everyone's a bitch just cause you don't like what they have to say. is just like, where's all that toxicness coming from? <laughs> it's coming from Woodstock 99. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> That's, That's where it was born. <laughs> yeah, but I think who knows, maybe gaming's desensitizing people. I don't know. Something. <laughs> Yeah, it's a I mixture mean, I, of everything. I Bad. think there's just so much more dialogue now with the internet. Like, you know, back when Jagged Little Pill came out, there was there were famous people who had platforms to speak from, but we didn't have constant access to their platforms, and we didn't have our own platforms. And now that we do, people are talking, and women are talking, and they're talking about all the shit that we've been putting up with that Alanis Morissette was singing about back in the 90s, you know? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. Pretty much at this point, you can tell who's just trying to be a troll and just upset everybody and who's just a dick and doesn't care. <laughs> and that's not even the name entertainment, right? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh, that's the most okay. frustrating people they are. Mm-hmm. All right, Johnny Five, what do you got? Well, I figured I'd go with my favorite of what we call the grunge era, even though these guys didn't actually start out in Seattle, if you didn't know. But that's the band Stone Temple Pilots. And the song Ooh. that I've always gone back to, it's not just because of how great you know the riffs are on you know, Scott's voice, but that's Wicked Garden. That's the one. Okay. That's a good song. And it's especially when you read the meaning about that, which, as Scott has explained, I believe it was a few years ago before he died, that it was about a song that people are allowing all their innocence to be lost from their lives. And unfortunately, that does happen to certain people, especially certain people I knew at that time and I know it's always stuck with me even ever since I was a kid and nice <laughs> that atmospheric huh <laughs> yeah and it's from that whole album I could say it was great even though I know people say they always they try to sound like Pearl Jam like no they were their own band and they clearly show that later on when you get to the rest of their albums but it's this one that I think represents them the most and what they would go on they would progress so very good pick yeah go for another female singer here i'll go with underground by sneaker pimps <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> i just love the vocals on this and this literally is underground rock music garage music you know that's come well aware in the mainstream and i think it came out around like 92 93 but it's a lot of good stuff from that year alone but yeah it's like um i just think the song is very hypnotizing and <laughs> anytime yeah. i hear a movie trailer or promo that's using them like oh, okay <laughs> you guys are totally in my same mindset <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, i think more or less they're just beautiful songs it's like and i think they were kind of a one-hit wonder from that but i'm sure they got plenty of other stuff in their catalog i could revisit <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually, I went back to that album a few years ago, um, and there were a lot of songs on there that I didn't even know that were quite good, so okay, perfect. definitely recommend that. Maybe yeah. a lot of it was <laughs> too deep. <laughs> <laughs> For our tiny brains <laughs> back right. in the 90s. <laughs> the record companies want fast and mindless. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. They get, get some of that. They sure did. <laughs> I, I, 
I looked at the uh, the Billboard Top 20 songs of the decade of the 90s, um, and it's something that I didn't really pay attention to in the 90s. A lot was, of us didn't. We were just like, if it's on, we're listening. <laughs> yeah. Well, there was a lot of great R&B music in the 90s, but that was not my style. You know, I was definitely yeah. like a rock and roll kid. Um, they definitely so, censored us from it, unless it was playing on a bunch of other medium. Like you say, it's like it would kind of, it would just, you would hear it at like a store or a, or a grocery shopping, you know, and you, you would be like, what is that, you know? Yeah, it, it was kind of like metal. It was hard to tell a lot of them apart. <laughs> because mm-hmm. yeah. it was so oversaturated by that point so yeah <laughs> well yeah like um i just i mean i heard it on the radio and like i know all of the songs because they were everywhere but i just i just it wasn't my thing at the time you know what i mean yeah so i was really Very interested good. to like see that the top 20 list there's so much r&b and like boy bands and stuff um but there's very little rock music on here like there's no stone <laughs> temple pilots there's no uh, sneaker pimps there's no alanis morissette it's like um tony braxton boys to men a lot of boys <laughs> to men um some shania twain which isn't r&b but that same kind of like ballads you know instead of right. like rock songs um that and i was like really started becoming a different sounding country <laughs> yeah it's really interesting like because when I think of the 90s, I think of, yeah, like grunge and trip hop and rock music. But that's clearly not what everybody else was listening to throughout the decade. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like, interestingly enough, so this is, there was a whole explanation of it on the Billboard website of why this song was the number one song of the 90s. And it's, I think, because it was on the charts for the longest so it's not because it was actually like in the number one spot for the longest but <laughs> the song is how do i live by leanne rhymes okay how do I live? right like, yeah, i would I never that. have thought of that <laughs> looking it up now i'm sure i heard it oh you've heard that that's connie they played on connie at the end uh, okay oh did they yeah they did uh, that's how i, I knew that song <laughs> huh I haven't seen that movie for ages. No. <laughs> it's on cable TV every week, and it seems on CMT or TNT. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Okay. Yeah, and... yeah, there's two different versions of that song. Oh, I know. I tried oh. both versions. <laughs> wow. Are, yeah. are you secretly a big Leanne Rhymes fan? No, I'm not. Actually, <laughs> my mom was. That's why I heard it. So. Oh, okay. That makes sense. I might have to listen to more of hers. There's no shame in it. She's got some great oh, I know. pipes. <laughs> oh. I, I prefer her version of the other one, which is Trisha Yearwood. That's her name. Oh. And I tried listening to that, and no thank you. But that's a different story. <laughs> oh, was Trisha Yearwood's the original? No, that was the cover version. Oh, interesting. Huh. <laughs> yeah. All righty. What do you got for us next, gang? Who wants to go next? <laughs> oh. I'll go. Oh. I'll go. My bad. <laughs> um, so the fun. the song that I actually had in my number one spot, just because I think it's actually my favorite song of all time, um, but I don't just a '90s song ever necessarily. Is Pepper by the Butthole Surfers. <laughs> yes. There you go. <laughs> it's such a messed up, very demented song. It's like, man, <laughs> it's like it's, messed up on the run, Texas family. <laughs> it's so, it's so weird. Drinking um, from a fountain. <laughs> I, I was just looking, like, because I realized I love this song. I have always loved this song. If it comes on the radio, I freak out. I sing along with it. I love listening to it in the car because it makes me feel really cool because it's just got such a, like, fat, sludgy beat to it. Um, (laughs) But I didn't know what it was about. So so I started looking it up before we got on here. Um, And apparently it's about a bunch of people that 
the lead singer knew in high school who had all like died or suffered horrible tragedy and he literally just wrote a song about them <laughs> which makes it even more depressing mm-hmm. <laughs> and yet, yeah then you want to reanalyze it's like wow okay <laughs> yeah. so i think i got the whole story kind of gotta... <laughs> yeah um but i think i it's think it's like thing. I think it's got a good case for being one of the top songs of the 90s because it has, like, it kind of combines, like, very grunge sound with a more highly kind of studio produced sound. And the Buffalo mm-hmm. Surfers, like, most of their stuff was just, like, completely out of control, like, garage rock. Music. Yeah. <laughs> and this song is so different from most of what they made. Um, and I, if I were like a butthole surfers purist, I would probably not like this song. <laughs> but Pepper just has, it's its so singular, but it, at the same time, it really fits in with a lot of the, the trends in music that were going on at the time. I so. think you're very right, yeah. Because, I mean, yeah, a lot of these bands, you know, would just play until, you know, and what you got is what you got, you know, <laughs> there's no going back. And I think, yeah, I, I think this is, the only one that really gets radio play there might be others but i if they are i haven't heard them so yeah maybe they get played on like college radio stations but it's probably oh there you go maybe i mean yeah. but yeah it, it, it does have kind of a really neat tune to it <laughs> yeah yeah i love that i have to song. listen to that i haven't heard that song oh hmm. oh it's so good we should just play it let's just let's just listen to it and that'll be it for the podcast <laughs> we just play it on repeat <laughs> I seriously <laughs> love, love, love that song. For sure, for sure. <laughs> Whew. Okay, what's next? <laughs> well, I guess I continue the grunge movement. This will be the second one I mentioned. Since I've always loved this song ever since I first heard it. And it's kind of unusual for this band because they usually don't have acoustic based songs. And the one I'm talking about is Nutshell by Alice in Chains. Mm, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> and the thing I find interesting about that song is when you hear the opening line, which is kind of true today, if you think about it with social media. Well, he says, We chase misprinted lies which mm-hmm. is what a lot of people tend to do nowadays. Wow. They don't bother reading headlines or anything like that. And it's just a very moody, atmospheric song that really showcases Lane Staley's voice. Nice. Along with you know, Man in the Box, all of that. But yeah. So this song just feels way more personal than a lot of their other stuff, which kind of just seems oh, yeah. like typical you know huh. 90s i mean it's dark like the other songs but you can feel it in this huh. that's oh, why I, i've always enjoyed I don't it know, i don't know if i know that song i definitely don't recall it being played ever as much it seemed like yeah. everyone was wanting yeah, was to know the, if here comes the rooster for the very end time <laughs> yeah. it was on like on the ep after huh. that and they even played it on MTV Unplugged. Okay. So, cool. Um, shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, isn't it wild to think about the fact that back in the 1900s, if you didn't own an album, you didn't hear all that band's songs. Yeah. Or, like, mm-hmm. if you didn't watch, like, their MTV Unplugged or, you know, whatever. Like, I thought I knew a lot of Alice in Chains songs, but I don't think I actually have owned an Alice in Chains album. It's so unless I... Sorry. Yeah, I could totally go on Spotify now or on YouTube and like look up their whole discography and listen to the whole thing. But since I didn't back in the day, I just don't know this song. It's wild to even think about how much that's changed. And take it with a grain of salt, because yeah, it's like you don't know necessarily if, you know, when you see someone saying so and so is overrated, is like, is that because you're tired of that song or you don't see the value in it, or have you actually gone through their actual discography (laughs) don't see the appeal that way but it's like yeah (laughs) yeah that's a good point but yeah i mean we definitely have to talk about alice in chains if we're talking about the 90s and stone temple pilots that was also a really good one like 
Oh yeah. The, yeah, the heavy have, hitters one later on. Here. Another grunge one, but I'm saving that one for later. So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. Okay, well, now we're talking grunge. I'll go ahead and say The Man Who Sold the World by Nirvana. Oh, hell yeah. Ah. It's like the only <laughs> one of my, theirs that I think is actually personal. The rest are often just, you know, getting lost in the moment, kind of in this one, I think. Really, it's just has a good tune. <laughs> Yeah, and I am a huge David Bowie fan, so David Bowie cover, I will always get behind. Um, yeah, that is true. <laughs> it's like everyone's got to remember, it's not theirs. <laughs> I actually, I heard a story once, and this is like from someone I know, I have no idea if it's true or not, but I heard that David Bowie said that he once like introduced himself to someone and the person was like, oh, you're the guy that covered that Nirvana song, right? And he's like... <laughs> Yep, that's me. <laughs> Back to Cincy Hammer. <laughs> yeah, I, Nirvana is like the the rock band of the '90s, right? Like, I so I like I said, I was looking up. Um, I looked up the Billboard Top 20 list from the '90s, and then I looked up, you know, just a whole bunch of other articles that people have written about top songs of the 90s and every single one of them that I looked at except for the billboard list put smells like teen spirit in the number one spot yeah I think it's just I don't know if it's just that it appealed more to college goers or if it was just you know that that big an impact but I mean I mean Bowie, Bowie as himself is already just a remarkable person, and I always have to remind myself, okay, this is from 70s era, this is from 80s era, and yeah. <laughs> this is his remixes with Trent Reznor and Danny Saber. Okay, um, but yeah, I guess Teen Spirit is like that's just it. They 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 were grown up teens who yeah. still didn't want to be told how to function in this world, and <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess you could say the song just works because like the message was already out there and they just had to cover it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That and then, I mean, they did it in, in like such a soulful way. It was really, it really hit hard. I think. <laughs> Bowie said that in a far out magazine excerpt that it was a good straightforward rendition. It sounds somehow very honest. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, your song was honest. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's an interesting take on it. It sounds kind of like he didn't really like it that much, but he didn't want to say that. <laughs> he's like trying yeah. to be like, trying to be. I think political. he's honored to be, you know, like just say get a cover of his song, and like you say, he pro, you know, that's how you do it. If you don't care for it, you don't say I don't care for it. Right. You let everyone else read between the lines. <laughs> yeah, that's what it sounds mm. like. He was. That's a forum argument text. right there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because apparently we can't talk about anything without arguing. So. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Apparently. Well, now I feel like I have to argue about that. But I. I, <laughs> <laughs> I object. Everyone <laughs> gets along. <laughs> I'm outraged. How dare you say that something happened that probably was in a magazine? I don't know. Yeah, I, I got nothing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, got, I got nothing. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. All right, Lindsay, what's next? Okay, all right, what's my next one going to be? I think um, my next one, if we're going for, like, grunge and rock, I'm just going to keep going with that, is Say It Ain't So by Weezer. Oh, mm, okay. Now, here's that. I didn't know that was 90s, so 90s. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was. I, was, yep. I thought it was early 2000s. <laughs> I think if we were going for, like, the general 90s experience that uh, Buddy Holly was probably the bigger hit, like, I think they yes. played that so much on the radio, you know, but Say It Ain't So is like, it's just such a cool song. <laughs> I think it's the better song. Um, and I have like so many memories of like driving around in the country where I grew up playing that album and just like turning that song way up and turning the windows down and, you know, just loving life for a few minutes at a time. Fucking awesome. Yeah, Weezer was a huge band for me in the 90s. Like, I, I had some friends 
who had a band and they covered a lot of Weezer songs and um so like those are my first like concerts you know like going and like hanging out in somebody's garage while they were playing Weezer you know and I just got really really into Weezer for a little while there so so they have to be on my list perfect <laughs> and was it were you often used to that kind of deal where it's just like you would just see these artists just making very uh, passionate songs and just is like yep that I'm totally sharing this with the world <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah and I really like to sing also so any song that I could like sing along with and get into it you know I would be a big fan of and say it's even it's funnier stuff. if it's a song almost like Kaya's My Neck My Back where he's like you're just now guffawing at oh this is the radio version <laughs> 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 this is the radio version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someday there are going to be people who work who are kids now who are going to be like, "Oh my god, WAP. That was the radio version." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, WAP is definitely a good parallel. <laughs> it's like, I don't know how it even became that big when it's like you can't even hear half the song. Right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I guess, I mean, kids aren't nearly as, don't have the wool pulled over their eyes nearly as much these days because, like, they could just go on YouTube and find the uncensored version. Super easy. Like, yeah, I think a lot of them are easy to already downloading it on their Spotify. So to them, right. this is just, hey, I'm hearing it and no one else is complaining and I I just want to hear it on repeat. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Shit. Well, I guess I better go. I guess I'll go with Connected by Stereo MCs. <laughs> Do I know that song? Do I know that you've, one? You've heard it, but it's, you know, they weren't as big a band, I don't think. They've been around for a while, but they kind of did a little mixture of remixing tracks as well as just other just kind of electronic songs. All I can it. think of is Connection by Elastica. That's what's playing uh, in my well, head. Elastica. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I'll have to look up this band, Elastica. Uh, <laughs> look, 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 look it up real fast, and you'll... Yeah. Okay, but if I can't play it, I'm going to look at the lyrics. <laughs> the lyrics are ah, 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 ah. <laughs> right. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, wait. Yeah, okay. I think I do know this song. <laughs> <laughs> cool. One hell of a song. Oh, yeah, I played that one. <laughs> <laughs> There's always one of those, uh, man, these guys are having one hell of a time recording that. <laughs> Yeah, it seemed that way. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> what a fun song. That's a great choice. All right, thank you. <laughs> okay, but we we have to, like, sing it or something for the people at home. Don't know. I mean, I'm sure they heard half the sample, but yeah. <laughs> Basically, the song just really, I, it's just the perfect kind of escapade where you're just, like, just... Yeah, you feel like you're actually tap dancing or walking around with these guys, <laughs> well, however yeah. it's illustrated. Yeah, there was a lot of that in the 90s. I feel like, you know, there was like grunge being really serious, and then we got into like industrial being really serious, and there was gangster rap, which is really serious. And then there was all this <laughs> bubblegum pop that was just so completely over the top. There was a lot of really fun like in between stuff that was good music and also just freaking fun to dance around to yeah 
stuff that even just like you can't even sum up it's like well you kind of got to be there you got to hear it and you'll just disappear into it yeah yeah that's a good one right. as for the band i got no trivia on them i have no idea what happened to them but they seem to just pop up here and there so oh. <laughs> i don't know if they're freelancing i don't know what but... no <laughs> no idea no, no idea at all. <laughs> Are we Googling it? <laughs> uh, I, I pretty much went for the resume on uh, iTunes when I was downloading it off Apple Music. So, I mean, I definitely saw some stuff that was listed for like 2004, I think. So, I mean, I'm, okay. I don't know. Okay. So, I don't know if they're popping up or where, but. Okay. Well, probably uh, on tour now. I feel like all of the big 90s bands are all tour touring again now that we're all, all like grown up and might have the money to actually go see them <laughs> maybe like yeah. alanis morissette and garbage are on tour right now yeah garbage had a new yeah. single called wolves which is really good so yeah gotta... uh, oh my god i don't think i have any garbage on my list Lindsay, what are you doing uh, you know i love them as much as the next person but yeah i didn't have anything on there but uh yeah. Gotta I think rethink I, my whole list I, now. I got stuff for the 2000s, though. So. Yeah, true, true. Stupid girl. <laughs> there you go. Let's just put that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fair. All right. <laughs> We're done with that was special. Let's do two. Mm. <laughs> there that you was go. the one that was in the um, Romeo and Juliet soundtrack. Oh. Okay. That was. Uh. I can't remember what it was called, though. Hmm. I, I grow up. No, someone else. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I like that one that will play Dad to Death. You know? Not nowadays. <laughs> Not nowadays, but, you know. Oh, it was called Number One Crush. There you go. That's mm. the one. That, that was a cool song. Yeah, that would be the garbage song for me, I think. Of the 90s. I think that was in the 90s, right? Had to be. <laughs> if it's on Romeo and Juliet, then it definitely was the it 90s. It was definitely 90s. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we got about a few more honorable mentions, but I'll let you guys, like, do two more, and then... Oh, no, we're the two more? Oh, okay, gotta choose. <laughs> the rest can be honorable mentions, well, and I think most people will get this. You know? <laughs> okay, I want to do a very choose. obscure one from an artist I mentioned in our last podcast of the 80s. Billy Squire, his song Young at Heart. <laughs> he loves his Billy Squire. I do. <laughs> and that's one that at first when you listen to it, you think it's talking about his childhood, but actually talking about the Cold War at the time. And it kind of surprises you, especially the last half, but as I've already said in the, in the last podcast we did, that he was always creative with his songwriting and musicianship. That's why I wish the stuff that happened to him didn't happen, but we were back then were just dumb. That's what I always say. Oh, yeah. Was, but that's one I had to mention because I've always felt that I was unappreciated. He is. All right, Lindsay, one more, and then we'll do honorable mentions. <laughs> oh my God, one <sighs> killing me here. Just okay, what, just um, one that like just you, if you dance to it or sing to it every day, then maybe it's the best of the nineties. <laughs> okay, okay. Hmm. Well, recently I've been listening to a bunch of like nineties mixes, you know, on Spotify because mm -hmm. they're fun to dance around to while you're making dinner. Um, nice. And I determined that Spotify thinks that the top song of the 90s was One Headlight by the Wallflowers <laughs> because it is on every list, either that or Mr. Jones by the Counting Crows. I miss the Wallflowers, but yeah, Counting Crows is a good parallel. And yeah. 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 And neither of them, I wasn't a big fan of them back then um i couldn't tell them apart from all the various imitators of dave matthews it seemed like everybody yeah, had some like kind of alternative band 
<laughs> yeah, and they, but they were like adult alternative, you know, it was like more low key music. And at the time I was angry and I didn't want to hear that. But right. the ones your um, teenagers aren't listening to. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Like I was just like, what is this crap? And now I'm like, oh, this is a good song. Like this is a well put together song that I can enjoy. But back then it was not cool enough for me. Um, <laughs> so. I'm, well, I'm so in other words, you waited for the hype to die down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I knew who these guys were before they were playing them on every Spotify list. I just didn't like them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Only personal, I just don't like you. But I think the one song that is also on all of those lists that every time it comes on, I'm like, hell yes, this was the 90s, is <laughs> Semi-Charmed Life by Third Eye Blind. Yes. yes, that was on my list somewhere. Yeah, uh, them and I, I still get them and Everclear mixed up, but they they have some keepers. <laughs> yeah, and the funny thing is that when I was in high school, and uh, I don't remember the name of the album that that song's on, but it was their big album. When it came out, I got a copy of it on CD, and I would listen to it in my car. But then, like when I was around people, I would turn it way down because I was embarrassed that it wasn't rocking that hard. <laughs> like, I only wanted to be playing loud music if it was, like, the coolest rock music. Right. But mm, Semi Charm sure. Life was, like, super poppy. And that's why it got so popular. But now I listen to it, like, when it comes up on a Spotify list, and I'm like, this song is depressing <laughs> as hell, number one. And the rest of that mm-hmm. album, like, rocked pretty hard. Like, what was wrong with die. me? <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. but yeah oh, when it comes man. on i'm like hell yeah this is the 90s like this is this is the good stuff right here definitely the album had so many good songs on the uh mm-hmm. seriously i definitely hear that and santa monica by everclear back to back a lot i <laughs> now what does everyone think of flagpole set up by harvey danger i'm an amputee god damn you I think it's okay, personally. <laughs> it's, not my, it's not one of my all-time favorites, but it's, it's also really good for dancing around while you're, like, cooking. Yeah, definitely cooking. And, and it's just kind of a funny song. It's more than anything. <laughs> yeah. Is that how every paranoid person felt back in the 90s? Damn. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Or just people with overactive brains. <laughs> That's why it's in the end credits of disturbing behavior. So. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> uh, Learning to Fly by a Tom Petty. Mm-hmm. Jump Around by House of Pain. Yeah. I oh. thought you were gonna. I thought you said Learning to Fly with Foo Fighters. I was like, oh. <laughs> that... I had Foo Fighters on my top ten list. I had Everlong. Everlong is so great. Oh, oh yeah. That song makes me cry. Like I have so many memories attached. To it. <laughs> it's amazing. That wasn't even a hit at the time, actually. Really? Oh. No. They even said that. It wasn't until Learn to Fly was when they became huge. Interesting. I guess I guess I just knew about them before they were cool. <laughs> I no guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I can mention I Alone by Live. Mm. That's another one. Oh, I'm always love listening yes. to. Yes. I love Live. They were so good. And Lightning Crashes. Oh, oh yeah. Live has been around so long. It's like you do realize it's like they are very, very deep and very oh, yeah. sad, but <laughs> relatable. Um, California Love by Tupac. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy by Seal. I was gonna mention that too. Party Up by DMX. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this makes me want to break some glass. <laughs> I also had, um, speaking of breaking things, I had the beautiful people by Marilyn Manson on my list. <laughs> because, like, I remember, I mean, I was like perfectly ripe for that album when it came out. I was like so mad about everything, and my parents wouldn't listen to me, you know, and I was wearing black, and like everything was just terrible. And Antichrist Superstar came out, and I was like, this Even people it. who weren't emo basically might as well be emo because we're all wearing a lot of the same clothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the beautiful people, I remember, you know, being on the radio for a while and like people losing their minds because they were so afraid of Marilyn Manson. And I was just like, yep, this is my thing now. 
I identify as Marilyn Manson forever. <laughs> uh, so many feelings. <laughs> we also mentioned Alive by Pearl Jam. Ooh. That was one of the other ones I was going to mention. Yeah. We had them. Of course, Black Hole Sun, Soundgarden. Yeah. I could mention a lot of Soundgarden songs, actually. But yeah, that's a good that's... one. Oh, Under the Bridge by Red Hot Chili Peppers I had on my list. In the same kind of not not as um, grungy, but in that same kind of yeah. field. Chili Peppers didn't really get big until the 2000s, but they had some good stuff out in the 90s. Oh, totally. Stadium Arcadium was that in 97, right? That was so six. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I remember that <laughs> album clearly, trust me. I remember that album clearly. Remember that album clearly. Like email. Yeah, they had... Uh, Blood Sugar Sex Magic was out in the 90s. That was a good yeah, one. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> um, what else do I have on my yeah. list? I got... Oh, anybody remember I'm Gonna Be 500 Miles by the Proclaimers? I definitely heard it. I heard that. Yeah. Cut play. Don't, don't <laughs> listen to it or it will be in your head for like a week. <laughs> but, but I loved that song. Uh, it's a good one. Um, oh, here's another one. Criminal by Fiona Apple. Mm, yes. Okay. That was a very cool, very sexy song that I was very into for a while. And I'm still into Fiona Apple. She is so cool. <laughs> very cool. <laughs> uh, didn't she? But yeah, she's doing the actual piano playing, right? Yeah, and she actually released an album last year during quarantine um, that was really good. Like, I, I can't remember it. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. I think it might be another one of those, like, four-sentence-long titles that she does. <laughs> but um, definitely recommend looking that up. For sure. I, I can also mention Brian by The Cure. Is, yes. You know, the Crow soundtrack. Of course I'll mention that. Oh my totally. god, I love that song. And they used to not even play it because they weren't sure about the music rights, but it became so popular they're like, okay, we'll play it now. Such a good song. Yeah, I remember when that first came out. I heard it. <laughs> this, this is the perfect 90s scenario, so I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I was in a Hot Topic in the mall, and I was probably shopping for, like, bondage pants or something. <sighs> And that song started playing, and it reminded me of this this person that I had a crush on, and they lived far away, and you know I hadn't seen them for like a year, and it was just like the the perfect combination of like teen angst and love and dark the dark interior of a hot topic, um, and that song was like exactly the way that I felt at that moment, and so for years after that, I didn't know the name of the song. I knew it was the cure, but you couldn't just look up music the way that you can now. And I couldn't find it anywhere. And I no. didn't know it was on the Crow soundtrack. <laughs> I couldn't find it. They didn't talk about it. It like disappeared. Right. Unless years. you had the catalog, you didn't know this. And yeah. Yeah. And when I finally it found it first... again. It was like on uh, on like Napster or LimeWire or something when I was like in college. And oh, I was like, oh, a my God. <laughs> it's my song. <laughs> I'm always talking about Rapid Share, and everyone's always talking about Napster. <laughs> Is Napster still even around? No, I think they got taken down a while ago. Damn. Yeah, I think so. And yet Spotify's still here, so there you go. I get that it was before Spotify, but still. <laughs> <laughs> exact same formula, and yet. Uh, yeah. They didn't just have as, they didn't have as many good fair use lawyers back then, too, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah, when you're the first to do something... Uh, you get taken down pretty quickly, but so when I talk about the show Oz, is like it was before Sopranos, and everyone acts like Sopranos was the one that changed the edgy TV formula. It's like no, Oz was the one, the yeah. OG. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Still sad about it. Great show. <laughs> Definitely doing an episode on. <laughs> oh, here's one. No rain by Blind Melon. Oh yes. Oh yes. That's like that. That voice is also very deep. <laughs> it's 
tip top nineties right there, I'd say. <laughs> as well, as I, is um, I, like, I just mentioned Oz. How about Behind the Walls by Kura, which plays on the soundtrack for that show? Oh. <laughs> Look it up. It's, it's a great jam. <laughs> Nate, that's my dog. Locked up behind the walls. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just it. Nate Dog, Snoop Dogg's cousin, is actually performing in that. But they're, oh, it, the music video is interesting because it's making it look like they're actually it matches it up with footage from the show. So like they're actually in the prison rapping with the inmates. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> what else we got? How about, uh, also we got Dangerous by the Dilly Brothers. Ooh. Oh. Um, the Stone Cold movie. Uh, so of course I had to mention that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All these underrated songs by acclaimed bands that everyone forgets play in these cult movies. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But you man, John mentioned Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sometimes, I mean, that was the fun of it when you saw 90s definitely made it fun to just check out the movie soundtracks and see how many of the songs, whether or not they had to do with the movie, actually were pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, the Speed soundtrack has a lot of cool songs and by Including bands the that. Including Kyle Trong. Kyle Trang. Yeah. Billy Idol. <laughs> Billy Idol. But like, there's a bunch of other one fun stuff on that album. I could play that one all day. And yet, you, know, you look up the bands and they didn't seem to do anything after that. So I'm like, hmm, okay. <laughs> yeah. I hate it when I can't look up anything else by nurse. <laughs> Yeah, okay. like the entire Crow yes. soundtrack, as we mentioned Burn before, like um, it's all good 90s music on there. And that what's that Stone Temple Pilot song that's on there? Um, Big Empty, that's what it's called. Yes, oh, love that song. <laughs> good stuff. Well, Lindsay, uh, uh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I got two more. Two more. Okay, classic. I got... Well, speaking of another 80s band, I'll mention Living Color, Love Rios' Ugly Head. Mm, yes. Yes. I had mentioned that. And Living and then, Color was always good at sampling a lot of real life dialogue into their songs. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what made them unique compared to other bands. Yep. And then the final one I'll mention was Lenny Kravitz, Always on the Run. There you go. <laughs> oh yeah, love me some Lenny Kravitz. Actually, I, th I really like looking at Lenny Kravitz too. I'm not gonna. Lie. I'm just gonna blatantly objectify Lenny Kravitz for a moment. <laughs> he is very attractive. <laughs> He's got a daughter who's acting now too. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay, so Lindsay, where can we find you on the interwebs? Oh, um, I guess the the easiest way to find me is um, at my website, slinzyg.com, and I'm going to spell it because it's spelled weird. It's L-Y-N-S-E-Y-G.com, um, and you can see all kinds of stuff that I write, and you can also find links to other stuff that I do, like uh, <laughs> my, my publishing company, um, Oneshi Press, where I publish comics and illustrated novels. Um, also, my podcast, which is Ourgasm, um, and I think those are the main things that I'm doing right now. So that's, that's where you can find it all in one spot. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is really fun. I feel like I could talk about 90s music for hours and hours, so thank you for reining it in on me. All good, and uh, I'm glad <laughs> you had, had a blast here. I think we had a fun just soaring back into two decades ago. Heck yeah. Going on free. Exactly. <laughs> oh, and Baby Got Back by Sir Mix a Lot. <laughs> oh, yes. It's also yes. a nice yes. song. Just throwing that out there. Just put it in there. <laughs> Might as <Okay>. well. <laughs> we'll return after these messages. Hey, feeling down? Feeling low? Not enough podcasts about movies in your life. Why not try? They must be destroyed on sight! 
the new podcast cure all sure to get you right with the world and on a path to better living we have exploitation we have italian horror we have zombies we have slashers we have crime films we have spaghetti westerns we even have sci-fi and sex comedies so take a dose of they must be destroyed on sight as needed and let the hosts lee russell daniel harper paul romali and the odd guest host cure what ails you Warning, may cause atrophy, African consumption, black fever, bone shave, chin cough, colic, cramp colic, dropsy of the brain, elephantitis, grocer's itch, jaundice, mania, miasma, mortification, palsy, pox disease, rheumatism, scurvy, St. Anthony's fire, summer complaint, and worm fit in some people. Consult a physician before listening. Hey, I heard you like movies. I heard you like to hustle. I heard you like podcasts. Well, guess what? There's a podcast for you out there called The Home Video Hustle. Damn right. Every Friday, we talk about whatever movie PJ picks out the bag. What does that mean? Every Wednesday on our YouTube page, I put a bunch of movies in a bag, and PJ picks one out at random. And then we just watch it. We talk about it for maybe like an hour, hour and a half, two hours. Whatever we feel like doing, wherever the conversation leads us. But do we actually talk about the movie? Most of the time. Ah. Tangents galore. Yes. So believe me, we may be a movie podcast, but it's not always about movies. We might talk about video games. Mm -hmm. Music. music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the big one, music. (laughs) Uh, Sometimes we might get a little bit of politicalness in there. Yes. Sometimes we may just, oh, we know what we like to do. We like to tell stories, PJ. Ah, yes. I am the master storyteller (laughs) of the podcast realm. (laughs) Undefeated. (laughs) So if you like to hear about movies, video games, whatever foolishness comes to our mind, the most random stuff you can think of, check out the Home Video Hustle. You can find us on the Stitchers, yes. the Google Play, yes. Apple Podcasts, what else? Podbean, what else? Podcast Addict, goddamn, all that. Ain't no reason you can't get your hustle on. We everywhere, worldwide, baby. Hustle, motherfucking hustle. Hey, we can't cuss in the promo, PJ. Ah, we gotta be family friendly. There may be podcasts out there that don't want us here to say, ah, 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 ah. good fun <laughs> stuff. Well. <laughs> you <laughs> don't, don't, don't run the listeners away Pete. Ah, i'm sorry but this is going kind of long yes so we'll end this and say hey check out the home video hustle every friday on all the various podcast outlets peace peace as far back as i can remember i always wanted to be a gangster And while Witch didn't make it to the top of the world, he did make the Gangs of Hollywood podcast. So join the gang and enjoy a movie review podcast about movie gangs, gangsters, mobsters, and the mayhem they cause. You can find GOH Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at GOH Pod at www.gohpod.com as well as your favorite podcast listening app. And remember, say hello to your little friend for me. If you take two old punk rockers who are past their prime, put them in front of a movie screen and give them a podcast, what do you get? Cinema punks. Cinepunks. It's the mixtape of movies. Did you ever see a film at such a young age it left you traumatized with cinematic wounds? Oh, necrophilia. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. It's a dead issue, man. Don't don't push it. Cinema PsyOps is a weekly podcast documenting an ongoing experiment on the mind of an unwilling test subject. No one should have to watch this movie. Oh, no one should have to watch this. No one should have to watch this movie. Surprisingly, it's not a topic that a lot of people really want to tackle. I'm shocked, prudes. I know, really. Right? It's the next sexual frontier that no one wants to explore. I am, in the most sincerest of senses, disappointed in you. It takes a powerful goddess like Connie, jam her arm down the monster's throat and kill it. I'm still tripping out over that. Even as a kid, I was like, I gotta find a girl like that. Every week, I, I get a new look of disappointment that I never thought I could get it's out of. It's unimaginable. At 12 years old, you should not be watching this one. Obviously. At 13, you should not be. 14, you shouldn't be. I'm not entirely sure even 17-year-olds should be watching this 
just because you're offended by something doesn't mean that you have the right to demand that it doesn't exist. Watching this film again, I had all of this like little nerd glee with everything that kept little history up. doll yeah, popping up absolutely. at you. So I totally loved this film. Hey, I know why you you know, couldn't see that. It's because your brain's warped from watching this shit at twelve years old. Yeah, this is this is a rough movie. I told you ahead of time when we were getting ready to do it that it was. How did you watch movie. this shit at twelve? Because physical wounds heal, cinematic ones don't. Listen to Cinema Psyops. Hey everybody, I'm Corey. And I'm Zach. And we're the hosts of Podcasting After Dark, a cast dedicated to late night horror and sci-fi of the 80s and 90s, often found on HBO and Cinemax. You know, the movies your parents didn't want you watching as a kid. You can find us every other week on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, and Stitcher. This is what you want. This is what you get. It's time, let's check our cue, baby Pair it with a couple brews, baby We love your movies We love the bad ones, too So we watch them all and pass their lessons on to you Oh, yeah Everything I learned from movies Helps to make life a little bit groovy With a one last plot holes and gratuitous movies It's time to get busy With your friend Steven Izzy At eilfm.podbean.com Welcome to Who Was She Podcast. I am your host, Tara Jabari. After a decade working in documentaries, marketing, and all things digital media, I found that podcasting is a strong medium to share stories. After years of producing for others, I decided to start my own biographical podcast. Who Was She will focus on the life of a woman throughout Baha'i history. The first season is about Lydia Zeminoff. Lydia's story explores the subjects of the power of language and faith. Her father invented the universal language Esperanto, and she came from a Jewish family and became a Baha'i. She grew up during World War I and was killed during World War II in a concentration camp, despite heroic efforts to save her life. How can one person's life intersect with so many others? connect across borders, and inspire a biography which inspired this podcast. Over the next few weeks, I will share her story with you and the lives that were most affected by her and those who affected her life as well. They include her father, Ludwig Semenov, her spiritual mother, American journalist Martha Root, and the Baha'i German soldier Fritz Mako, who worked for the resistance undercover while having to serve the Nazi party. I want to thank the author Wendy Heller and George Ronald Publishing for their blessing to let me use Heller's biography, Lydia, The Life of Lydia Zeminoff, Daughter of Esperanto, as a main and instrumental resource for this podcast. So please subscribe and learn about this amazing woman, who traveled through three continents in an effort to bring unity through the power of language. You can also find more information on our Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest at Who Was She Podcast. Music was composed and performed by Sam Red. I am your host, Tara Jabari. Join us next time as we begin our journey about Lydia Zeminoff. Hi, everybody. It's Mac Jackson. I wanted to invite you to a new site called the Forever Adventure Network. This website has everything. Pictures, videos, blogs. There's original music by Harmony Constant. Two podcasts. One is the MacGyver podcast, where we celebrate Richard Dean Anderson, his iconic roles, and how it's influenced our lives. There's episode discussions, interviews, and life conversations. The second podcast is the Never Gets Old podcast, 
where we celebrate all the best things that we love in life, from TV, movies, music, and comics. The site is also the home for the MacGyver SG-1 audio series, an ongoing adventure series that continues the adventures of MacGyver and SG-1. There are also multiple stores to choose from for all of your pop culture and adventure needs. Come on by and check us out today. And thanks for joining the adventure. Are you sick of the same old stale podcasts? Well then join Vanessa and Darren as they dissect movies of all kinds. The two lifelong cinema lovers bring their favorites, curiosities, and first-time watches to the operating table and inject them with a healthy dose of snark. Then there's the waiting room, where they examine books and short stories. So just look for them on Apple Podcasts and where fine podcasts are available. They're part of the Legion Podcast Network. Follow them on Twitter at VD Clinic Pod. Join them on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash VD Clinic Pod. Or email them at VD Clinic Pod at gmail.com. They're ready to cure what ails you. <laughs> and still, they just might be a little contagious. Hi there. It's Heather from the Watching Netflix Without You podcast. Did you know that there are over 1,200 Netflix original feature films and documentaries? And that number is only growing. So I've made it my mission to watch as many as I possibly can. Then, with a delightful guest or guests, disclaimer, more often than not my brother, Ryan, we spend an episode rating, reviewing, and discussing a film at length. The first half of every episode is spoiler-free for those who haven't seen it yet, and in the second half, after a very clear spoiler warning, we dive into it. And that's really about it. You can listen to Watching Netflix Without You on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and more. We now continue with our program. Follow us on the web on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The podcast is available on Podbean, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor, Apple, and anywhere else podcasts are available. Feel free to review our show and leave comments on any of those sites. Thanks a million for listening. It's a jacked up.